What do you think the media got wrong about 2016 and the election outcome? I think they underestimated rural America, that we are our own people and we have our own thoughts. And a lot of times we get grouped in as just a bunch of farmers who don't have any thoughts. And it's absolutely not true. Howard County, Iowa, where almost half the voters are registered as independents and the other half are nearly split even between Democrats and Republicans. It's the only county in the U.S. that voted by more than 20 percentage points for President Obama in 2012 and more than 20 percentage points for President Trump four years later. It swung 41 points, the second largest flip in the nation. We sat down with seven Howard County voters at the fairgrounds in the city of Cresco to get their take on why the county swung so drastically and gain an understanding of what's going to be important to them in the 2020 election. Maybe if we could just do a show of hands uh, who voted for Barack Obama in 2012? Who voted for Donald Trump in 2016? Barry, you're a true Obama-Trump voter. Why did you vote the way you did those two different election cycles? What relates the most to me, and it's not red or blue, Republican or Democrat or any other, who do I think is the best choice for not only what's helping me grow on, on my business or my farm, but who's the best current leader for our country. In 2012, I felt things were doing really good. Um, we had a good thing going in the agriculture community, so there wasn't anything wrong with John McCain. It was just keep the status quo. Uh, when it came to 2016, uh, I felt like Donald Trump had more similar interests to what we did. Uh, I know maybe it was a lesser of two evils, right? I felt like he had the, the best outlook for the ag community in general. Neil, as the, the Republican chairman, who do you see in the Democratic field who would have the best chance of beating Donald Trump in a county like Howard? Honestly, a, a Midwesterner, Amy Klobuchar, and I don't understand why she isn't doing better in Iowa. I prefer to see some younger people on the, on the, on the board, so that's, I attended a Pete Buttigieg um, rally, and it was, it was wonderful. Trump wasn't your first pick for a Republican nominee in, in 2016. Are you on the fence at all? Might you vote for a Democrat? Um, it would take a lot to do that. I think it just speaks to the, the people in the community that we're that open-minded or that secure in our own self-beliefs that you can go to a Pete Buttigieg can, uh, rally or a Bernie Sanders rally and, and pick up on the things that they, the good things that they're talking about. and maybe sway your own political party to do the same. I've always said there's no one person that's gonna find someone that agrees with them 100%. I'm always on that 60-40. I might believe with one party 60% of the time and can't stand 40% of what they're saying. And you should never be afraid of listening to the other side for the good things that they're talking about. Show of hands, how many of you agree with Neil's 60-40 rule? Most of you, you, you don't feel like you have to be 100% uh, with a particular party at any given time. Yep. If we build a wall and I throw my rocks over at Neil and he throws his rocks over at me, what are we going to solve other than exchanging rocks? We have to communicate. <laughs> Laura, you're the Democratic Party chair, but you also work in the healthcare sector. What would you like to see done with the healthcare issue? Well, there's definitely a huge problem. Um, and I think when these candidates talk about Medicare for all, like that, I don't see that being a reality. I understand. I work at the hospital here too. This hospital sometimes doesn't get paid for 90, 120 days from Medicaid. We're a tiny rural hospital. We can't afford that. Who in the Democratic field has a plan that you think is viable? I like Pete Buttigieg. Most people here know that because he gives you an option. I think that you've got, you can have Medicare for all if you want it, but if your union's giving you a great deal on your insurance, you don't want to get rid of it, you can keep it. And I think that sounds to most people a little less scary um, than just saying, we're going to do Medicare for all. We all know there's a problem. Why can't we all sit down at the table? Neil and I could sit down at a table, I feel like, and work it out. All right, Neil, she set you All up. Right. Uh, so <laughs> what, what, right. what, how, how do you fix uh, okay. health care in America? So when uh, the Affordable Health Care Act was passed, President Obama said you can keep your health plan if you like. 
Um, and after that happened, you know, there were some things that made that more difficult. Mainly, and one of the main reasons that Trump did so well in this county is that farmers have to self-insure unless they have a spouse that, or they have a job in town that provides their insurance, we were paying our own. And the plans that we had pretty much became outlawed or made it very difficult and the costs. So they may not have just taken them away or said you can't have them, but costs skyrocketed after the Amer uh, Affordable Care Act went into place. So even though you could still keep your, your plan, you couldn't afford to. If you could just raise your hands if you're satisfied with the way the economy is going right now. Okay, so about half of you are. For those of you who aren't satisfied, why are you not satisfied with the economy right now? Because people aren't spending. And, and you're, a, you're a small business owner. And yes. Are you feeling the slowdown? Yes, and especially over the Christmas time is usually the best time for retailers. Uh, for small businesses, including Small Business Saturday, is usually the biggest day that we have. And this year, it was no comparison for the last two years. Ross, you're in the waste collection business. I guess there's always going to be demand for that because we're always, everybody, even if the economy is good or bad, you're going to make some garbage. How are you feeling about the economy? Well, most of the time, I think we're kind of, for lack of a better word, a little bellwether on how the economy is. Uh, we know when people are cutting back because when you're, when you're cutting back, you aren't throwing things out. You're not building as much. This is the slowest that we've been in the winter with some sections of our business in years. So you're, you're detecting a, a slowdown potentially? De definitely, okay. definitely. And I, uh, yeah. go ahead. I'd have to disagree with that as far as my business, um, conservation. So what we do is we help farmers uh, find uh, incentives and uh, grants to pay for projects. The farmer has to pay a certain percentage of that. This last year, we had our biggest year as far as conservation. Kenny, uh, you work at a uh, manufacturing company here in Howard County. Uh, you didn't raise your hand when I asked about how, whether you feel positive about the economy or not. How have shifts been? Are, are you able to get as much work as you want? How is the union feeling about things right now? We're just worried about our future. I mean, we had a peak of about 450 employees, and now we're down to less than 300. The workforce keeps getting smaller, and the production that takes a lot of manpower, a lot of labor input, are the ones that are leaving. The high profit production with low employee input are the ones that are staying here. This panel has dramatically more diversity on it than the county does. If you could, I would just like you to talk a little bit about what it is like to be a person of color in this county. I've only lived here for five years. Um, I have never felt so black in my life <laughs> living here. The racism, I have not personally uh, felt it or dealt with it. Um, I mean, I've noticed things uh, when people don't know me, but I feel like everybody knows me now, so I don't feel that anymore. But um, my 14-year-old with her peers, I mean, she's called a nigger like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times since third grade. Now she's in eighth grade. Ross, how long have you lived in the county and sort of what's your experience been on this I've topic? I've been probably here in the neighborhood of 30 years. I think it's a, it's a situation of the times. I think younger children, they're experiencing problems that we never did before. It's openly racist to, to a lot of young kids. We don't see that though. It's, it's, it's like we're going backwards. Yeah. Do you attribute any of this to the, the tone the president uses sometimes? Definitely, yes. definitely. Yes. Neil, as the Republican chairman, can you just respond a little bit to the, the tone of the president? What's your take on that? Well, obviously the president's rhetoric on, on uh, a lot of issues and individuals, particularly if, uh, if it's a political opponent, he usually goes to a, a more of a personal uh, attack on someone. Um, and but that's part of his uh, personality, and that's being the outsider that he, he promised to be. He's definitely not a politician. Just his approach to draining the swamp and things like that, that that's very appealing uh, to people. But the tone and the rhetoric uh, definitely is not uh, something that any of us uh, appreciate or, or condone. 
you guys are equally divided among Republicans, Democrats, and Independents, roughly. Who, who thinks the wall is a good idea? Who likes what the president is doing with the wall? How does the immigration issue play here in the county? I don't have a whole lot of experience with that, but I know working in the agricultural industry, um, being surrounded, I mean, we struggle to get workers that are willing to work around here. Right now, a lot of, a lot of farms depend on those agricultural visas. The immigrants that are coming here came here for the same reason that most of our ancestors did, to better themselves. Mm -hmm. And to find work. And find work. I think immigration is really needed in the country, but we need it to be done legally through a process, not just illegally just walking across the border and making sure you contribute to the society. The problem with that is, is it's not being done quick enough. There are plenty of farmers in this area that have immigrants working. I would say most of them are not necessarily concerned about whether they're legal or not. The farmers that I know have tried to get help locally and they were unable to get it. One way a person can measure the quality of life in a country is if people are dying to get into the country or dying to leave. And we have people dying to get into this country. Barry, how are you feeling about the farm economy? It's had ups and downs, obviously, over the last few years. There's been years that have been good. There's been years that have been bad. So uh, over the last couple of years, uh, it feels like treading water. President Trump's uh, trade war has obviously affected agriculture. How are you feeling about the trade situation right now? Uh, it looks a lot better now than it did even a few months ago. But obviously, as we've lost trade partners, uh, our overabundance of supply, uh, kind of combination of both things have made the farm economy weaker as we lose trade partners and keep producing more than we ever have before. Courtney, how are you feeling about the farm economy and your own family farm? Well, for my husband and I personally, I mean, we're a small farm, so it may not be large dips and like large, big dips and small rises, but as being a small and young farmers who are just starting, um, we definitely feel those a lot more than a more diversified larger farm does. So, I mean, we obviously have to supplement our farm with off-farm income. Are you supportive of this trade fight the president is leading? Yes, hopefully long-term gains. We might struggle a little bit short-term just because, again, we're small and we're just starting, but long-term, hopefully it's positives. The caucuses are, are mostly for Democrats this time. Uh, who intends to go to the Democratic caucuses? Okay, four of you. Uh, and who are you each leaning towards? Go ahead. Uh, I believe Elizabeth at this time, possibly Pete. Pete. You've endorsed Pete. Most likely Pete. Bernie. So we have one maybe Warren, one maybe Pete, one maybe Bernie. You guys pretty much cover the whole, sp there's, no there's no Biden supporters in the crowd? Well, that's Howard County. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>